interrupt the current cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is BTW RLM 359. Now, I don't know if you're ready to see what I want to show you, but unfortunately, you and I have run out of time. The Matrix is not a movie. We're not going to happen. It's not going to happen here, folks. I'm looking around. It's just not going to happen. All the greatest people in the world are just not up to it. But we'll see. I'll keep plugging away anyway. Despite y'all and your obstinance, the problem is not that hard. And part of the problem is resolving the obstacle that we see in front of us that's been provided as the real thing, what I've called before the spaghetti western false front. But cricketism is a natural law, and there's not much I can do about it. And so that means you have to step up a little bit tougher, get beyond our nature to be those crickets. And before I go any further, thank you very much for everybody that's donated to the Fundathon at RLM. We now are past it, and I'm told that, and thanks to my dog Rex for shoving us over the top, with the last $200 donation, which brings us into the bills being paid. We have a little bit, of, little bit of cushion on hardware, and we can now proceed like we normally do without the considered idea that maybe it wouldn't happen next week or continuing. And so appreciate all that, all that everyone's done to keep the word going out. Again, those of you that have a better idea or another idea to broadcast, talk to Grimner at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, he's quick to t set up a broadcast position for you. And you too could be telling people what, what you know. Uh, I guess as I thought occurs to me there, one more point. I think it was last week, and excuse me, things are just seeming to run together anymore. In fact, I don't know what happened, but the last, that power outage where I was off air that one week, it somehow messed me up. I don't know quite what's going on. It hasn't been quite the same. I'm feeling I'm way behind since then. Can't seem to get things forward. It seems that seemingly things just take longer to get done. So I'm not quite sure what that was. Maybe that's the, uh, this year, like I said, hindsight's 2020. We're going to be overwhelmed with all the stuff we should have done back in 19, uh, 2000. But at any rate, um, natural law is we're going to be apathetic. And what I, I kind of, again, the news is, sits there to tell us and remind us. Crickets, if Finland's insect boom goes bust. In the story of crickets, Finland's insect boom goes bust. They mentioned and identified the reason why it's failing. You're not all you all you folks aren't going to be fo forced into having to eat crickets because after the promotion stopped, the consumers took over and market reality steps in, and due to consumer apathy. The insect food boom goes bust because, folks, together, say it together with me, crickets. Consumer apathy. This is going to be people that are apathetic on their rights as well. It's a pretty universal, natural law that you don't step up and defend yourself. Well, someone might come along and make you food, I suppose. And some other people that have that decision may decide that they don't want you no more, so now you've been powdered and put in a big warehouse and no one wants you. How's that? Anyway, so that was one little interesting, I cracked up little story here. Uh, to me, it was the, the truth. It would, to me, it, what, else, what else do you think, folks, when you have to continue a promotion against the people that don't really want to move, not even enough to protect themselves and the rights and the property they claim so dearly that they were trying to protect? I've tried to point out as nicely as I possibly can, for you know, particularly like, and it's not just this, but another at rights, the Second Amendment. You're being taken. Your Second Amendment's being absorbed right in front of your face, and they're doing it by ways that the Second Amendment can't protect you. And I've been trying to tell you for ten years at least, since I've been broadcasting, and longer when I was writing some things, uh, to be aware of this dynamic and and really position yourself ahead of it. But no, the natural law. There's a natural law out there. Folks, it's called uh, crickets. And there's news uh, to prove it, if you needed the news, that apathy is almost a self-fulfilling prophecy here. 
again, uh, I know I'm not much of a comedian, but that was a quite a quite an interesting, funny truth. That's as sad as can be. And so we, again, are reminded: let's not be apathetic. And apathy is not being uh, interested. Apathy is finding a, a wrong you need to make right and making, taking the time it takes to learn how to make it right, and then doing so. So many steps. I've said we're so many steps behind on accomplishing what we have to do. It's not enough to be a complainer. It's not enough to think you understand on such a situation. It's, it starts to become better than enough when, just better than enough when you start to move forward. And I guess I keep getting frustrated every week to talk with people that I work with, and we keep explaining, at least to ourselves, how short everyone's falling, no matter where you look, and in the subject matter. And here's the interesting problem. It's not that we just make that complaint. The black and white I tell you to go to sits there to instruct us better and quicker than any opinion I've ever noticed and seen, any action that we've taken that counters the inevitable natural law of apathy because you immediately have to go into that mode that we were told if I needed a statement and a third party to say so. Thomas Jefferson said you need to be educated and a mass of educated people vigilant to stop the encroachment on what you thought was your your way of life. And I was talking last night, I made a comment in the chat room. It's, what I'm looking at is going to reinvigorate the organic establishment. A lot of people get that confused, and they think that means going into the system to have the system agree. And if you listen carefully to what I'm saying, I'm saying, no, that's not what you do. You go to expose the system is not the old organic system, and it's a trespasser. So to go to the organic establishment, because why? Because that's in this di- in this this orga- this establishment in the organic United States of America is an obligation to protect property, and that's where we start. And how to do that is pretty well already written down. And the thing you're living today is the failure to adhere to those that level. And it was up to us to keep the level. As I've explained to you in the Virginia Constitution, it's really in the first three sections of the Bill of Rights really clearly laid out. And as I think about that, two things I guess I have to address that I kind of blew bat past here. The uh, noticed, I think, if it was in the Sound Minds chat, thank you for all y'all that do that and do that interaction and put your notes, your comments. I get to see what's going on. But I noticed there's a couple of people that maybe they're frustrated with me. They can't talk to me. They want to have an interjection on what I say. I don't really do a talk show anymore. I used to, but then uh, some things came in relative to communication uh, systems, VoIPs, that I don't trust at all. And uh, we can't seem to get a good one I, I, that I, I see lots of people flocking to. And then I realized that I really don't talk in a way that's interactive for communication, that you're frustrated that you can't interject into what I say, that you have a question on what I say and don't have an ability to make a make a question so that I can answer. I don't do that interactive thing either. That's why I ask over and over again, send me an email, Proton uh, proton Mail. It's markonthebeast at protonmail.com, and I'll work out what I can with you, and then maybe even talk about it uh, later. Maybe even like we heard before where Mark, my dog Rex asked about a lodial, and a man, a weatherman, it was a lodial. I was able to touch that. The Be careful here on sound minds. The... YouTube account, I think he's running a couple of accounts at one time to syndicate this broadcast live. I am live on Sunday at noon o'clock Pacific. I've been, except for that one week, just a few weeks ago, I'm live every time. But the Sound Minds or any other syndicator isn't in contact with me. And I can't see and I don't see the chats. And so you, this is a, a little bit of a problem, but I'm not here to communicate wha- an interaction by interview or into take um, a position. What I find is people don't understand what I'm saying and they're frustrated with that. You th- I can't touch everything so you have it in your mind that you're interested to hear me say something about what you're interested in. That's not my focus, typically. And so I'm kind of, I want to have people, the people at the Sound Mind is great, but there's a, I've noticed some, some people that don't, un- they want to talk to me. I don't really, I'm not set up to talk. And those that are running the sound minds and keep it, and they're doing a great job actually. When I tell you a title, he actually puts 
And then I see Veronica throw, everyone's kind of throwing in to get the content up that I can't give them as links ahead of time. So that you can see it on a video, actually, if you were to get there, go there to want to see all that. But I'm not interacting with that. And he's got it, they've got their hands full. And so this is a little bit of a difficulty, but I think if you just listen to what I'm saying and then go apply what I'm saying for why I'm saying to do it, it there's not really that many questions. And so the fr- I feel the fr- I understand the frustration, but there's really nothing that I can speak to there. And there's nothing I can solve there. At any rate, so I don't want to belabor that. Uh, the, everyone's doing their best right now to get the information out. Please send me an email if you have a question. And I've, I've, I've asked, and I've said it before, if you don't like what I'm doing, a Grimner has a place he'll give you. You can tell us all about how you do it better, because I'll want to hear about it for sure. And then we can resolve that point as well. And so you just have your own broadcast uh, that way. Uh, anyway, so there's lots of thoughts that go through my mind. I do want to kind of clarify that. Don't don't berate sound minds. They're not they're not in any contact. There's nothing to answer to anybody that has a question relative to what I say. And I say that without without there's no judgment. There's no diminishment at all of what's going on. It's a matter of the subject matter I speak about. It may sound like it's coming out of the news, but I'm speaking to two or three points underneath the foundation, founda- the foundational responses that should be happening relative to what we're seeing or how we are to interpret what we're seeing so that we really don't take up a lot of time, e- even though we have to talk about some of this stuff. And part of it is to be able to identify what's going on quickly and moving to a thing we wanted, we need to get done. In other words, we've already decided the, th- the wrong we want to make right all this really, this news is really just noise getting in the way. Some of it is threat that we have to be careful of so that we're not diminished in our ability to get the thing done we want to get done. And so really, if, I, if you haven't decided that there's something you really want to do more than complain about, in a way, there's nothing I'm talking to in you. And that's a kind of a problem because as I opened the broadcast and finding out natural law is crickets, I'm speaking to an awful lot of people that won't actually do something. And that's a that's a real serious thing. When I look at what we're doing and that it does take action, this is really that is a natural another natural law. And and so, uh, without belaboring all this, everyone's doing that on the on the syndications they're doing great work. Don't expect an answer necessarily, especially real time. And uh, I don't know, I can't thank everybody enough that does the, the syndication to bring the hard work forward and then people that are attentive. And I appreciate the sound minds. Your interactions with what I'm saying, whether you agree or not, is is important because we're having to, we can hash out what's going on. My, I'd like to see a little bit more. If you have a question or you have a suggestion on presentation, send me that email. So but moving back into something that I didn't really think I was going to talk too much about it. I guess for me, the pigs fly flu was pretty much said at the time. It was going to be a reoccurrence. Hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> we're we're seeing it again here this is the time. A lot of people are pointing out that this situation with the the corona virus killer beer is apparent to us as being a repeat. Uh, the question is, what really is it? I've told you, we to me, it's a flu. And people have I've heard people denounce anybody that says it's a flu. I've also heard people denounce if you just say it's a bioweapon, then you're kind of diminishing it. That's not true either. Again, you got to listen to why I would even mention it. It means you're looking at it more foundational steps to support something. You're looking at evid- for evidence, and you don't move on things that are just possibilities and probabilities, which is probably 99% of what you'll find in the news anyway. That's why I've categorized things for us. If you don't do it yourself. Uh, but this thing with this coronavirus just keeps going on. And uh, what's interesting to me, again, is identifying, to me, it's figuring things out, looking at what they're telling us to gain the muscle of discernment in order to validate or invalidate something pretty quickly or set it into a category of observation without much more time placed in it. I found this came through, and I'll just, again, I'm not going to touch today too much on the coronavirus more than to open up the broadcast to explain these things that there's a big question on what's going on. You know, I've been, and I just, and Gary L. sent me a video. I just was able to get through some of it before the broadcast. Uh, And the very important stuff came out in there relative to the frequency 
that's being used. And the new information to me was the 60 hertz and, and the graphs and the charts and the discussion that was presented in the video. And I think it's a, a lady named Dana. Pointing out that the, the frequency in 5G at 60 gigahertz has no license is important, as she points out. But it also has a spin state effect on oxygen molecule. And so there's a, that was probably, from that video, the most important thing. There's really not much that she's pointed out that I haven't touched in different ways, slightly different ways. Given that the spin state effect, and they're not looking at any of that, and they haven't been, then you have to kind of get into spin states and understand that technology. And that gets me back over to the potential and how the effect of the bioweapon, as a bioweapon, it might work. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bioweapon at work. It just means that the frequencies just coincidentally affect certain things adverse to people. Now, we can go ahead and put put a motive behind it, I suppose. And it doesn't mean that I don't. I put it in a category of possibility. But a spin state alteration allows for a whole lot of different things. And this gets me back to the 1950s information that I, we were told back in the 70s about the what I called the binary weapon. And then they've came out, come out with trinary weapons, where they use different pieces of, of technology to invigorate, animate the thing that they want, so they can place it somewhere before it has effect, and then they can turn it on by, if you will, if they do electromagnetic and attack, you can you flip it on by like a switch. And so we that brings up the class B transmitter condition, and I was just writing an email to someone explaining, just as an observation, nothing I can get back into. If you look at a Class B amplifier, it's a polarized output that they, they commingle at the end and they blend it so it sounds uniform. But there's another space in between the two fields. And so you can polarize information on each side and, and send it out and send it out phased or not or dead space. And there's a whole lot going in there. Multiple frequencies coming at you. I've found, and I told you this before, and some experiments I've done create, if I, I couldn't help but to say, they look like three-dimensional holographic fields that they can create in your body, uh, in a body. And it, and it doesn't necessarily mean biological. It can be non-biological. And so I, I did an experiment a while back to prove that it could do a non-biological condition. And so to my mind, as I wrote an email back out, th th this is all very possible. 60 gigahertz is just about a, a frequency. That's not just what you're looking at doing, except that a 60 gigahertz energy is enough to ch cause a spin state alteration in an oxygen molecule is important. Now, whether or not it goes through the, what it does to people the way they do it, to me, the symptoms look like a lot of things that the body is responding to. My thought on a spin state shift would be also a molecular shift, which also means instead of going to oxygen being harder to be assimilated in the body, it would also combine with other molecules more readily, maybe like carbon monoxide, which has the same affinity for receptors, which would has the similar, very similar symptoms of all this as well. So again, we're all looking at symptoms, but we're not knowing about the cause. And so again, we're, we, I go through this long-winded discussion here, identifying all the possibilities we can be looking at. But Let's focus, but then ultimately let's focus in on what's most probable, prob possible. Protect against what the worst case could be if we would be affected. And if not, we just keep an eye out for it. And we get into the things that we need to be doing locally relative to what affects you most directly. Let me add, add something here. So last night what caught my attention, and I put it back out as a question, uh, Remen Hospital at Wuhan University has recently developed an AI processing system for its CT images of COVID-19 pneumonia, which can detect CT lesions of the pneumonia in 1.33 seconds. 1.33 seconds. On average, the accuracy rate of primary screening for normal and severe patients was... 91.5%. For those of you understanding or listening for the 369 corollaries as well. But here's my response to this. If you listen very carefully, if you kind of did any kind of ideas on what this thing is about, 
I said, interesting, in my response on Twitter, you can go find this. How do they know these CT lesions are from COVID-19 caused pneumonia and not covering up for cancer or effects of chronic pollution or, or and to design the machine for spe- such spe- specificity that they had been looking at them to know. So they were able to quickly make a decision thing because they've been looking at this problem, but we also know one of the possibilities is, has nothing to do with the, the, six, the, the 5G rollout, and it has nothing to do with a virus. We ha- has everything to do potentially, again, potentially with the pollution rate that's being covered over by the government. As I've shown you, they used Fukuzilla to cover up for you, and everyone fell back asleep about the radiation that was in the states, all over the world, actually, being dumped in the ocean. No, they use these things to cover. And so, do I know this all for a fact? No, uh, you, none of us will know until we settle down if we have the capacity to go do the tests. Is it a possibility? Sure. But in this case, and here's a, how did they get this to see a CT lesion being pneumonia? When you go read about CT lesions, they're essentially clouds on the film. Uh, they may actually have, be able to have a, they map the three dimensional space on there. They have to go in to biopsy it. They can't look. They can see something's there, but they don't know whether it's benign or malignant or anything. Don't even know what, let alone a cause. And this is a, another serious thing. Let me offer something about the 60 hertz fascinating uh, de- determination, a fascinating observation. Raytheon's involved when you see that video. I guess I should pull that video link out. But at any rate, the anomaly that kills that as a causation for me, just to let everybody know here, not as a challenge. I think the, I think the video was a fine video, is that Iran to me is an anomaly. It was an anomaly coming in when they finally got the people affected in Iran. It's an anomaly. It, which is adjusting as time goes on, but it's still an anomaly as to how many people died immediately and continued to die relative to the rate everywhere else, how many officials were taken out, and they don't have 5G. In fact, their satellite to do that for themselves and to integrate uh, didn't go up. It had a problem, maybe unsurprisingly. And so, that again, we look for the anomaly to maybe temper some of the causation. No, we get that gets me back to: Is that affecting you? Can it be affecting you? Uh, where are, are you doing things like you should do to st- not allow for it to affect you? Uh, so anyway, we have a brand new test. They come out in 1.33 seconds. Uh, they can tell you that the lesion is caused by a virus, which is really impossible. Now I sent that that Twitter out, like most of my twitters that I think I think are somewhat profound in a way if you get to the bottom of it not many people respond at all so it just shows this this dead you know throwing things out into a dead space because if we started to actually interact we could start pouring through this stuff pretty quickly and again it either affects us or it doesn't we, we make that decision and then we can see whether or not it's a threat if it's not a threat then we we turn immediately and focus on the things we the the plan that we've set out on the wrong that we need to make right however big, however small. However, step by step we learn. As I've been tr- trying to explain to people here recently, and I think this, even my, I just remember, my dog Rex had a question. Maybe I should maybe touch here, right here. Uh, how do you make a claim? And okay, I appreciate that question, but you have to think a little bit more about how can I answer that? Because, and not to not give you an answer, I'll try and give you something here, but I have to make it up. See, it's not something relative to what you want to make right. It's just generic questions thrown out with no basis. The claim depends on the harm, and you're right to make the claim relative to the harm and who done it. And so that question doesn't give me much to go on. I give you examples on how to go about creating that or establishing that. And when I say, when you go to your extortion statute, in this case, it's probably under property law because extortion is the essentially wrongful infer- interference with your property. The other side of that is the wrongful interference with the right to the property. That's coercion over there. Then you keep these things separate because each have the cause for each has a different set of elements, even though they look very, very similar. And so your claim would be relative to extortion or 
coercion, or maybe both, but the elements now establish the claim. And so let's just focus in on that. It's made up to me, to you. This uh, The claim matters on what it is you're after. And if it happens to be a violation of your property that you think qualifies ex extortion, you would go to the black and white of your state. Maybe even, especially federal, you have to do that anyway. To get a federal officer, you have to find the state violation. As I've told you this before, this is not even new information. When I went after the Forest Service District Ranger when they tried to close us out of our, put a gate across the road to our mining claim. You, you can sue a federal officer. They'll tell you you can't, but you can sue where you can show and you need to show that they clear, they violated clearly established law. And what is more clear than nobody can obstruct a disposed highway, especially to a public use benefit and utility, uh, if you will, if, uh, need, need, necessity, like mining. And so clearly nailed them, and then the state got involved, so I found out that's when I learned how the state wasn't going to allow for remedy, and that's, again, the lessons learned on how you come to the idea, how I came to the position, I'll have to use equity and get rid of the courts. I use the organic condition to get rid of the veneer of authorita that looks like courts. You know, I hope I can get here because I'm going to get to the end of this hopefully today and show you what's happening over there in the UK. And no one's asking the real questions that they need to be asking. So let me get back to the... So my dog Rex is going to finish that off. The claim is a little bit off the point, but would be relevant to what it says in the statute for extortion. And I'm going to say this in paraphrase. I didn't even pull it up. I Maybe I should have. It, it, to a state uh, statute about, about extortion. It's under property, so you have to have a property identified. And you, that's a simple statement. That that property identified by an official named unwa unwarranted in authority, unwarranted in title, took the property without right. Or, if the case in the elements, the fact is, handed that right, who that right and title who they didn't have right to divest you in, handed it to someone else that didn't have the right to accept. Now, you lay out those point elements on a, on a piece of paper with your harm, and that's the basics of a claim relative to extortion. I would do another set of a fact statement relative to coercion at that point. And if I'm, a, if I'm in a state that recognizes it, or I would probably press, if I can show the existence of both, I would press again another short statement, a plain statement, as they say in the code, to guide you of the third cause for conversion, where they take both and extort and coerce the property with unwarranted without right. And so that's just laid out in the statute. And that's just a short sentence. All I put together was just a short sentence in a subpart to what can constitute an extortion of property. Once you make that together, you have a right to that, and they violated that criminal statute, you clearly show, you're not prosecuting the crime, you're, surely, you're, clearly, you're showing that they had no right to do what they did. And depending on your common law or equity, equity rights will depend on what the rest is that you say, but that your claim is those elements. And you do that with anything. You go through and you find out, like if you wanted to prove that you have a claim for the right of the use of a highway, ingress and egress, the statute for statutory acceptance lays out four points that you have to state. And you just plug in your four facts, which constitute the, the, the matter of law observation, not your opinion. We're getting way, there's no opinion here. The matter of law, fact, that the four elements plug into a statute that declares your ingress and egress as a right, as opposed to anybody else in the world. And no claim can come against it unless they produce the proper paperwork, if you will, is end up being paperwork, to show that what you're claiming didn't actually exist. And once it's existent, they can go to the county. Again, here's your power. They go to the county and the county court relative to a due, set of due process hearings that have to happen. And they would have to get a judgment from that court that modified or eliminated that ingress and egress. The claim is made on the statute that you follow 
that the statutory acceptance for uh, ingress and egress, a highway or trail. Okay, so that's how a claim is made. You find something that the, the government recognizes in the black and white, and you plug your facts in to qualify that you're worthy, and you bring that you, the other point is that you have a right to remain peaceful in your possession, and you're not. And because if there's, if you can't find a remedy at common law, you go to equity, and you go after them slightly different. You don't ask for damages. You ask essentially for the equitable uh, imposition that they be taught through a money consideration not to do that again. And so it's a slightly different case. But again, the claim is made by going to a statute somewhere. You just don't make this stuff up. You just don't talk about your ideas about what constitutional rights are because, as I've told you, in property disposal, all those rights are fulfilled in the grant underneath a patent. Those are like water under the bridge. We don't have to really talk about them. That's why it doesn't get so... I mean, I used to do it a long time ago, a long, long time ago. I was going to wax eloquent about all the constitutional law that's violated. Then I got to property law, and I got to these enabling acts, and I got to the obligations and duties of what the government was supposed to do, and I said, wow, this is all obligations and duties. I don't even have to complain about the violation of the Constitution. It's self-evident the constitutional violations. So you hold those back, and you just wait for them to try and do another evasion because they end up doing it, because why? We're not underneath that organic establishment. We're underneath an occupation of that in many different facets as well. And so, long way around for, I guess, getting to my dog Rex's uh, question, what's a claim? That was really an open-ended question I can't answer, but I'll give you a couple of examples. It all depends on what you think your harm was. And, and so, that, that's how it starts. And then you've got to go look to the black and white basis, the objective basis, of what constitutes the proper and full claim. And a little bit deeper reading will tell you what the statements are that need to be made. And, and that's what you put together. And, okay, so that's the claim. Now, let me get back to where I was going about this uh, testing and the 5G and, the again, the anomaly in Iran is 60 hertz. And, okay, we got this thing coming down on us. Uh, how, how do you stop it? Well, I, I think I'm back to uh, being pretty well fortified <laughs> in what I told you earlier. It's not, again, like to me, this uh, pig's fly flu, is, is a rep this is a reproduction of all that as well. Even if it's not the same, it doesn't matter because hygiene and uh, sanitation is really the big deal. And so I did run across a uh, What Kills Coronavirus? Answers about sanitizers, masks, and medication. Pretty interesting disclosure for you all. And I would, I've been wondering about, no, I haven't been such a, such a fan of the masks because if you understand what filters do and you understand their, especially around the face, the lack of real seal, uh, to me a, a mask is really a problematic condition. Now, I'm not saying they won't work. They'll tell you that they're 95% on an N95 effective. That means it's leaving out the rest. It's also if it fits perfectly, but they clog up and they and they get filled. And it, it doesn't take long for them. You'd be surprised how much air you're running through. Your oxygen that's being 5G spin state changed. <laughs> and so they aren't really effective at some point. They really are. You have to pay attention. And the most important thing is how do you put them on and put them off? Uh, without causing more contamination. And I'll just harken back to when I was in, even in high school, we had biology class, and we had cultures that we made, and we had chemistry, which I was a chemistry lab tech. And boy, did I learn the importance of cleaning glassware. The hygiene, the sanitation was required in chemistry. Not that I learned that the hard way too bad, but but yes, you, you learn a couple of nice, easy lessons that you want to make sure you get you have everything nice and sanitary and you keep that way. And how do you do that? You have to watch where your hands are going. And that's a difficult thing. I learned that lesson because early, early, early on, and I don't know, maybe I am still, but I don't get around to it too much. I know to identify it's poison oak, really allergic to that. I found out I was my own worst enemy. You start scratching that stuff and it gets all over the place. So one day I realized that the thumb was in my fingers and I started watching how my hands work. I realized I was doing it to myself. I stopped touching myself. Oh, okay. No, not that way, guys. And all of a sudden, I realized that the exposure reduced tremendously. In fact, I could confine it to the original spot. So move it till today. Your hands are really the big deal. Uh, the mask is part of you. Try to get it on and off. You deal with your hands. Uh, the high school 
chemistry lab and biology lab taught me how easy it is to move these these contagions or contaminants uh, around. Now, what it takes, your mind has to go into a diff, slightly different mode, and uh, it can be difficult. But you'll read this article, What Kills Coronavirus Answers About Sanitizer. I found fascinating. Uh, they do make a, they go, I should go through this, but it takes quite a while, like hand washing, hand sanitizer. Remember we did the, I found, uh, I think Gary L sent, sent that bread. Hand sanitizers aren't so cl- sanitary. Uh, the ultraviolet disinfection, the uh, the who, not the rock group or the owl, discourages their use because of the potential for skin irritation. Well, okay, they discourage it. I wonder why. They're part of the pharmacological imposition on you. Maybe the skin irritation is a little better than dying. And this is the risk management thing. And so you go look through this list. It's pretty interesting when you put your mind to it. Well, what you're looking through, look between the lines. Saline nose rinse. There is no evidence it fends off corrosion virus and any respiratory infection. Well, that touched a little closer to what I told you, but it isn't what I told you. And uh, there's no evidence doesn't mean it doesn't. And because you get depends on, again, when I talk to you, I talk to you in subtleties. It depends on the condition and the subtlety and what you have to accept once you do get affected. Your body, once it starts to trigger on these these in, in, invasions, will go through a cycle. It, it doesn't mean you can't stop it, the worsening of it. And that's the little secret I think about that. Spraying alcohol or chlorine on one's body, this will not kill the virus that has, have entered in the body. Oh, very interesting distinction there, a subtlety. Once it gets in, don't use alcohol or chlorine. I would agree. But eh, maybe they didn't answer the question, did it on the body, did they? So very interesting. You go through a whole list of things. Garlic, no effect on coronavirus. Sesame oil in the body, no effect on coronavirus. Herbal remedies, no effect on the coronavirus. Smoking, no effect on the coronavirus. Vaccines, flu or pneumonia vaccines have no effect on the coronavirus. Uh, I would have to add that maybe they have no effect on the flu either. But anyway, that's not the point here. Antibiotics. They work only against bacteria, not any virus. Critical to understand the the antibiotics they're given are for the reaction that your body puts up against the invasion. And so you start seeing uh, viruses are not necessarily biological, are they? You can't take an antibiological because they're not really biology. They're more like chemistry. And so interesting to start thinking about this. Of masks. Wear a mask if you're coughing and sneezing. Wear a mask if you're the one coughing and sneezing. <laughs> Protect others. Uh, a healthy person needs to wear a mask only if taking care of a person with suspected coronavirus when you're in that close proximity. And that was my other point. I think I made a comment too. If you're so close to people right now, if you need a mask, you're, the mask is probably not going to help you. You're too close. Rethink how you're interacting with people when the risk is elevated, this is flu season, folks. I mean, okay, back to washing your hands. What I noticed, did you hear? Okay, that was the last one they offered. I just want to offer you something here. That Remember when I told you look for the silences? And I guess I'm observing it because it's something I've told you I do that I think works, and it works in minimization if there is a, an effect. You didn't hear about using peroxide, did you? You didn't hear about using peroxide, as I explained, I do, to spray in your nose, inhaling it, and in your mouth, uh, in lungs, inhaling as best you can. Sometimes a bit harsh, but again, what's the risk? (laughs) You're working with that risk management. They didn't talk about peroxide, and they didn't talk, uh, and and I know I've also added the fact you can spray it in your body, and I find, for me, it works to confine what I believe I have felt is an invasion, which typically is a very strong point of irritation. Again, no, no tests here, that I can, no scientific tests. It's just my response to something. I become aware very quickly of a change, and I go after that change, and I keep spraying. I think the, what I do is about every 20 minutes, take that 3%, and if you can't do 3%, maybe dilute it by half, I found that's not necessarily as good. It actually may prolong the things. But I take the 3% sprayed in my nose, and I do it about every 20 minutes for as long as I can stand it if it's very, very aggressive. And you'll still feel it in your nose. But it, when you stop it, you've got to go a couple times past, and then you extend your time over hours, and you just keep spraying and, and inhaling. 
And yeah, it does sting. It's going to sting. Uh, and it's almost, you can tell the sting is how affected you are. But your body responds to it. Typically by the next morning, it's packaged that stuff up and you can get ex you can get rid of it pretty quickly and then do it again. And you'll notice another, another wad that makes created and you get rid of that one the next day. And uh, for me, I find that the symptoms, if there was any, either don't happen or they are gone within short order. And so th I just want to point out for me, if you jump on it immediately, if you spray before you go out, I found it really reduces the potential. And I only know that that would be a, a possibility when I'm not having cold so much. Or if I do get something that I that kind of jumps in your nose or in the back of your throat, the effect of that goes away. The symptoms don't last. So I, I just found that interesting, the silence of hydrogen peroxide. I'm not selling it. I'm not marketing it. I'm not saying it's the cure-all because the problem with this subtlety is you have to get on it immediately and not give up against, it's a war against something that's going to make you sick. And you have to get beyond the pain and you've got to continue to be consistent. Now, if it goes beyond a couple of hours and it feels like something's coming on, I may start turning over to more, like maybe echinacea, maybe other things, what, maybe aspirin. That's an interesting uh, little, you know, even if you want to take it in willow bark, uh, aspirin is a really powerful thing against some of this. Uh, at any rate, because they're dynamic. You have to understand what the dynamic is. Not that I have it all figured out, but there's ways, again, what I guess, here's what I'm getting at. Understand the foe. Work out for yourself uh, measures that you're taking when the foe attacks. Be relentless against it, and then keep moving. Don't let it get you down. Don't let it incapacitate you. Don't let it fog your brain. No fog of war. You just go after the, It's in my mind, you just go through a routine. Okay? But you have to be aware. You have to be kind of sensitive to your body. It's telling you things all the time. And so I found interesting the silence about that. I found it, I find the hydrogen peroxide working really quickly and persistent to be efficacious. I'm not so sure about the mask. I think if you have to go through an area, put a mask on. But get it off and wash your, sanitize your, your, your face with soap and water. Soap and water, saying that the, the stores are running, being uh, sold out now. There's runs on the stores. I wondered in the chat room in RLM whether or not there's been a run on the soap aisle. That if there hasn't been, maybe you can get it, get the lead on where the real, the real, one of the main keys here is. And so let me, let me just attach this to a different thing. Move it over just a little bit, not too far sanitize your system when you have an invasion. You're trying to figure out ways to avoid. You're trying to create barriers that make that uncomfortable for the invader. Now, I want to attach that to natural law. I guess I come into this broadcast, the natural law crickets, and I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm integrating how the natural law of response, because there's going to be foreign attacks all the time. Are you prepared? And what do you do? And when I apply this to what we do relative to government you know, this veneer of a, this occupation against us, those things come into play as strategies as well. And so you want to keep yourself squeaky clean going into a situation, and then you want to make sure that you are persistent to find the correct agent to make it uncomfortable for something if they do invade or as a barrier that they can't. And so I did maybe some natural law here going on. I can relate some of this through how even this coronavirus, in, in trying to instruct people on how you situate your mind and re-looking at what needs to be done, given you think there's a need. If you don't, I guess I'm not talking to anybody who doesn't think that. And I'm not talking there either about those that complain and that, that surrogates a need, because that's not the need. The need is a necessity. Go read up about necessity. In fact, you'll notice the governments do necessity all the time. That's the thing I tell you, you have to be able to fight and defeat and it's not quite so easy there. Okay, so what kills coronavirus? Uh, lots of things that people are not sure what to do. I thought this was interesting. Uh, I think that there's some in reading between the lines here that you can do. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I'd be spraying chlorine bleach in my nose. But I would certainly have already been doing hydrogen peroxide. Because once it gets in the body, you need something that's going to go after the biologically after the cells after the organism that's going to continue without killing you, without without causing such an irritation that it actually does different harm.
Again, finding the right weapon as you move along. Apparently, you can spray it on your body before, and it's quite fine. And I don't know if you've done that. It's not like it's going to kill you. Make sure you you rinse it off real good, though. But see, now we're doing back to that the rinse thing. Soap and water is is a good one. So anyway, keep keep moving in here. Uh, as I told you, also now, okay. So this is a World Health Organization. We're talking about this global governance thing. This next story brings up a different issue, but something I talked to you back at the pigs fly flu was all those modern modernization laws and the food modernization acts, and I told you the food security acts, they weren't going to make your food secure, and then eventually they worked through those and started diminishing what they did. You thought it was protections. If you thought about it at all, most people don't. And I haven't revisited it other than to know that the, our food system was going to degrade, and boy, I've t- I don't know if, you know, I don't know what you think. I'm certainly seeing the degradation of our food. Uh, we've had an increase in more pathogens in the food. It was supposed to be better. It came on as predicted, because, again, the false front is what they want you to believe on and, and, and argue about instead of looking deeper, which some of you think about but don't really work the evidence up like I've been asking as I see it, look around. But here, House votes to remove country of Oregon labels on meat sold in U.S. And the reason is <laughs> because they want to pre- prevent a protracted battle over labels with Ken- Kanukistan from Mexico. Why? Because of the World Health Organization finding that labeling discriminates against animals imported from Kanukistan or Mexico. And so discrimination, folks. Animals have more rights. Dead animal carcasses have more rights than you need to know. This is the food security condition. And it's not secure. It's uh, it's how they did, they take away your rights, essentially. What you do about this is uh, up to you. Obviously, there's a, an engine running that we certainly don't have the foggiest. Most of us don't have the foggiest idea behind the woodshed. I think we have an insight. I know where to go to look for the oil pan plug to remove. I know where to go pinch off the fuel flow. I know some things like that. Whether if I don't understand the whole function, I know how to interfere with a bit, make it belch a little bit. Uh, you can too. And we could slow this thing down a bit. But uh, the government believes that you don't need to know. Those are supposed to be your representatives, folks, because of a foreign agent said it discriminates against a foreign food source. To me, it's not food security. Now, what I suggest here, we've been saying it all along. It's not I haven't done this alone. And I think we have heard this by numerous over numerous years. The need, because of these things, to find your food as locally as you can. And in some regard, if we really got vigilant about this, we will help bring back the local production that I've been asking us to do at the countywide side, where you go into your county commissioners, you find the one that's conducive, and you expand now their knowledge to do the right thing, which is in the law, which is not an opinion, that defeats every other contrary opinion, that brings us back into more self reliant if not sufficiency as a community as a body of society local connection to your food source and you won't need to worry about the what the federal government representing your interests is yeah that was that was my idea of a joke us peach grower awarded 265 million 265 million dollars buccarinos for Bay, from Bayer and BASF in weed killer lawsuit. What do I want to say about this? Not much, uh, except a jury did find it. The problem with I see in this case, this is a this is a forum, uh, this is a forum selected to do this. Not that it reduces the, I mean, makes them more non-guilty. Certainly, these corporations don't like the verdict. I wanted to do you to put this in here because this is also part of that food security thing. If you don't understand it, it's also whether or not, I, I can't remember what dicambra does, but if it relates to biological manipulation, that's underneath the 1992 uh, Biodiversity Treaty. For those of you that thought that green was healthy and good, no, it happened to be economics and, and industry. And so, anybody who looks into that. But this points out that this this material can spread into different places and c- kill off and contaminate a lot of food production 
and interfere with property rights and do whatever it is. So, again, there's this, not, this balance that has to go on at some level. I'm not so sure I'm saying I, that because I agree with any of that relative to an invasion by some other other uh, property owner. But this is the effect against your food, really. And this is what a foreign guidance has done in a foreign imposition that was never, well, it was, it was accepted. I can't say anything more about that. Sustainability, sustainable development was not, but that was. And so I think, oh, wait a minute. Is that a convention? Oh, I may be, I'm having a, a, a mind, my mind's not working here. I think it's a convention. Maybe it isn't the law, the substance of the law I was thinking. I may be thinking of something else. At any rate, this all comes from the world, influ- world external foreign influence destroying you from inside. That nobody stands up, and I guess I get, you know, I'm sure I get a lot of people that just flick me, turn this channel to something else because they don't want to hear. When I say you so-called patriots are not really fighting the domestic enemies inside the gates. They come in all shapes and forms. They don't come in a uniform anymore, or likely not. They're not going to do that necessarily to the United States unless it is through the cops, which you've agreed to. You don't recognize that problem. But anyway, you talk about it, but you don't recognize the real threat. Here we have a foreign imposition of chemistry. comes in, it shows you evidence that it kills off food, kills off property rights and their production, and it hurts the production base. It hurts your food sources. Okay, I don't want to like beat on these companies. It's, we accept it. Uh, there m- may be some reasons that camera has had a real problem when it first came out. Thank, thanks to a lot of people saying so, right? I mean, this didn't happen in a in a vacuum either. Everyone was up there talking where the government wasn't going to do it. Like we see everything else, there's no safety standards done to any of this. The industry before Congress will tell you, well, they rely on the F, uh, the the agent, alphabet agency, and in fact, you look at the alphabet agency, they're relying on the industry. Neat scam. And we say not much about it. And so here's a threat, a foreign threat, foreign standards run in now through domestic juries. You think it's fixing something? It's it's just going to attack your next food source. This is that mitigation. This this is amount. It doesn't even. T- for the, even as much as that money is, it doesn't touch close to what they make. This is like this becomes the operating budget, the part of the operating budget to continue to do what they're doing. But there's a foreign source for its allowance on what as well. And so, again, jump in anywhere that you want, but you got to jump in pretty right. And I think at these levels, when you see the international levels, it does take a little bit more organization. And then that organization has to be educated to do the more proper thing. Uh, boy, lots of things go through my mind about how people, I hear things that are just not really the proper way. Uh, and I want to go talk about it, but I don't know. I mean, it's like it starts to jump around. I just start pointing out all the, the failures and all these different movements. And then I just sound like somebody that's critiquing and, and without an, ob- an object. And the bottom line is, is I can't speak to the failures. Because when you get right down to the failures, you just go ask a simple question of some of these groups, and they don't really understand the condition that they're in. So it's like, okay, we have a problem. You think you know. So you let your heart run out there. You let your feelings, you let your belief in, let's say, the Constitution that was supposed to be different than the whole world. You don't realize that's already been subverted. And you can't speak from there. What did I say earlier? Your property rights are fulfilled, fulfill all that. You don't have to speak to that anyway. You have to speak local to the violation. In other words, that's like you claim again, as I was talking about my dog Rex's question. It's your right asserted against the the trespass. And that can be, again, a a false, well, an authority, a false presented authority. So senior bank, it was talking, moving on, more this digital global governance type thing and how this is, you know, really still with us all the time, continuing and, and advancing is the problem. Why I talk about it, where we have to start being more locally active and within our own constitutions, our own private constitutions, prohibit or restrain ourselves from integration. Uh, this is part of the application this is part of the consent thing. And uh, again, it's like your hands you know, touching yourself. You don't realize that you do it quite a bit, and you're causing your own trouble. 
And so, a uh, senior bank of, uh, bank of England official calls for urgent digital fiat action. So this is on the stories I've had last few weeks, where the governments now are being um, giving you notice that they're on board. They have been, and now they're going to start promoting this digital currency. And I've told you this was fiat. It was going to be. Now we have evidence that central banks and major economies continue to change their stance on digital currency issuance. With Sarah John, the Bank of uh, Bank of England's chief cashier stating that this is so crucial that central banks act before tech giants establish dominance in the sector. So you see tech giants see, uh, are a, a threat, but the, the statement that they're moving toward changing their stance, I think, is a, a lie, because you could see through years ago, Lagarde was saying that they're already looking into it. They're just figuring out how they're going to be entering into it. The point is, uh, the tech giants are not government with that power. They will be displaced. The countries are looking to go to digital currency. You need to avoid that. Until you find a truly decentralized alternative payment system you trust, it's still going to be fiat, but it's a way to make payments that's not going to be tied into the central condition. Then maybe you can use that, but I haven't seen it yet. So word to the observant, local control would mean that you start going back to those heavy coins and you start working with people locally like your farmer, uh, your rancher, to get the food you need because the government doesn't want to make, give you disclosure. You think if they don't want to give you disclosure on, location, on, the, on the origin of your meat, they'll want to give you the disclosure on any other thing that causes a health effect in your life? Like vaccines, maybe? Like other things they do for your safety and security? like the Clean Water Act that allows pollution for so much, and then more if you go ahead and agree and admit you did it. That's quite all fine. Title 50 keeps coming around, folks. If you just haven't read it, you really have to take the time and read the horror show. It tells you all that they can do about it. And I, you know, if you want to do the short version, like I've, I've said, go talk, go watch Clint Richards' Lethal Injection some minutes in and then some two, hour and a half in, you'll, he'll, he'll read it, some of it to you. And so that's where he got it from me to tell him when I actually showed him what civil rights was actually. That's a mind flipper, n not a dolphin. So here it is in the news as we're breaking. I've been telling you it's coming. The guys are coming. These guys are coming around. The digital currencies, fiat. They don't, it was always going to be fiat. It wasn't anything different. How people, you know, of a libertine mind were embracing this, I have not understood. And I do ask myself, do, am I really getting beyond even, do I really appreciate this? No, I think I still do, even though I'm finding less and less abilities. <laughs> it's like, not that I don't care, but there's some things I just don't care about anymore. I don't care to be persuaded out of my own sense. I don't care to be watching people to claim to be helping me and while they're stopping me from feeding myself. Uh, what am I saying there? Let's say, what supposed regulatory authority, supposed administrative authority over a granted property right? And that We don't have a society stepping up and stepping on. All of that imposition is one of our problems. So when you don't see that, then you realize the society is not it's not educated. It's not action vigilant. It's a cricket. It, it's apathy. It's consumer apathy. Anyway, so here we are. It's coming down, folks. This is not a this is not a question now. In the notice, they're telling you that they understand that digital is a, a fiat. That it's a, a thing that they want to control. They will control. They actually tell you that the industry is a foe, but that's a false foe. Because they have the ultimate power. At any rate, so here we have, and then this uh, long will go story, which anticipates all this. Deutsche Bank to replace 18,000 workers with robots. Do you think those might be just AI, uh, blockchain accounting adjustments? 18,000 jobs cut to robots? You know, they were supposed to save us from ourselves, I suppose. We are supposed to be able to sit leisurely on a, we all thought we were going to go visit some exotic place in the world and sit with a, under umbrella, watch the ocean with our little, um, underneath the umbrella with an umbrella in our glass, 
watching the in our chair leaning back as we watched the bay of the ocean empty because we didn't understand that that shaking we heard a few minutes ago and felt a few minutes ago was the tsunami coming in on us. Deutsche Bank to replace 18,000 workers was a long time ago story. And I put it up because I got a whole bunch of emails then and I was going to address this, but I got a little bit, I don't know if it was disgusted, just dismayed, just disappointed. So many people bought into this Deutsche Bank thing and it was going to, there was problems in Deutsche Bank and bankruptcy and all. And people have a completely, I'll just say, inadequate understanding of what bankruptcy does. That that was going to trigger something. And so, and then the price of gold and silver were going to skyrocket and all this. Well, there's other dynamics that were going to raise that. And we're starting to see a bit of that now. But it wasn't going to be because of Deutsche Bank and its, its position in the European Union. And I was really dismayed. People that I that send me emails that I talk that I will communicate with uh, take on this uh, sensationalistic type view a lot. This story was one of them. I'm still waiting for all this fantastic price increase because of this Deutsche Bank thing. What I saw was a restructuring going on, a, monot- a monopolization. And when I and I've had this thing on this Deutsche Bank story up quite a long time on my tabs. I'm just getting to it now. That senior bank thing from England brings this more back to me. That's what I started to pull that together. They're running this thing into pretty soon, really, lit, and literally the digital world is doesn't need people. And, and honestly, it doesn't. You know, if you think about it, it doesn't need to, need to be between me and you, actually. And that's the interesting silence. We don't insist on something not being between you, each one of us. We will continue to listen to them say that they're coming to take you away and use their system instead. And so the answer is so local, local food, local money exchange, real money. Use that silver and gold. Get back to your constitutional money. It, it, don't, it's not an argument. This has to do with the jurisdiction and power condition. It has to do with where the source is and who can control it. So if you, got, if you try to do an analysis on the cost benefits, if you will, the advantage and disadvantage, you're missing an important point about why we do this as men and women. And when we start relying on the security of the government, they are foreign influenced. They're so foreign influenced that the United States, people don't realize that the foreign United States government's district is foreign to the state they live in. And the state they live on is foreign to their locale by way of the attachments that the state has done to the federal government by way of what? The fiat system, which is going to where? Digital, even if it wasn't a cryptocurrency. And we get to that cashless system that they we were told is coming. How long have I been hearing that? Here it is. How much, why do I deny it more? So it's not like falling in and saying, oh, the end is near. It might be. I don't know. But uh, the end is not nigh if I'm here today. How am I going to exist in this world that was planned to be a big prison? Is I think I think a different a different analysis. How are you in it but not of it? It's said to be. So why aren't we there in the working about the in and not the of? And so we keep moving. We got uh, lots to go through. Judge Trump. Uh, Donald Trump offered Julian Assange a pardon if he denied Russian link to hack. Okay, so here we get back to the meat. In it, not of it. Being uh, given something, suppose offered something that's not really the right, the same offer. Having a bunch of witnesses that get all over the wrong thing and start promoting the wrong thing, whether that's psyop part or whether or not that's just the, the common consumer response in everyone's apathy to actually understand. I want you to be aware of the here, this offer and a required acceptance, it was really a, a, the deal you can't refuse that was refused, and you see what happens. And so that's not the fear. You could say, well, that's the fear. Oh, you want to be fear monger. No, that's what happens. Now, what are you going to do in this case? I'm here to say there's a way to make a different record because when you're up against an oppressor, that's about all you have. And, and the only defense you have is whether or not people come to your aid on the right and correct point. Like I thought Virginia was doing with their all their people coming together, even though I think it was I, I've told you but I think I've no one said I've, I'm wrong on that the faux pas of calling a sanctuary city a county. Uh, I told you how to adjust that relative to what the 
black and white claim would need to be made and and how to bring that forward. You hear anything more about that, folks? No. Did you hear that they've uh, that, that jurisdiction, the, 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 the government there has made some laws to inf infringe on that? Yeah, just like I predicted. It happened to us. It's not like I didn't happen. We didn't stop that same thing. Our problem was we didn't have the numbers that Virginia had to be the mass of educated people to do the right thing. And so we got evidence on how to do this. We have evidence that we're doing it wrong. And we continue to be enticed and induced into offers that do not help us. This is what this story is. Donald Trump offered Julian Assange a pardon if he denied Russian link to the hack. That's the title, folks. When you go read on what they offered Assange, you find out that title is actually in error. And what was offered to him, because this has to do with the, the Russian interference. This is now Trump's, you want to rally around Trump on all this stuff. He's still, he's still part of uh, promoting part of this issue, which is the problem. They got too fast and furious, and they have to back off and go a slightly different route that makes you more, you'll, you'll swallow it a little bit better. You'll consume it a little bit better. What was offered was that not, was that he off at Assange would be given a pardon if he offered the non-Russian source. That's not the same as to deny the Russian that Russia hacked the emails, which he has already done. Is an offer he had to refuse. And when the Don is refused, you see what happens to you. I guess for me, this is the Assange thing. You're watching in front of your face how you will eventually be dealt with wherever you are and whenever you get picked up. Not as sensational as what everybody's misidentifying as a attack on journalism, because that is what they're attacking. The intelligence lines on the enemy's side. They've missed the fact that that means we're all enemies, as I've been telling you. Let me read my little tweet back to this. The offer was to name the non-Russian source. And Assange was supposed to disclose. This was a trick of the, to offer who it was that wasn't Russia. It's a confession that he said he wasn't going to do. He offered instead and denied that Russia had anything to do with it. But the Trump assist, uh, you know, shady dealers that these guys end up, these lawyers around him, well, we're going to make him do a confession as part of his ability to get let loose on a, on a promise of a pardon. They wanted to know his non-Russian source. He'd already denied that the Russia had anything to do with it, so they weren't interested in that. He'd already had done that. So this was a deceptive trap against Assange, and Assange wouldn't spring it. He wouldn't accept that deal. But I wanted to remind you here, because this brings up the continuing problem, our continuing problem. If you think there's an actual law, and don't laugh because then you say, what do you do? Because I'm explaining, I've been explaining how you go about making this record because you're in the land of an occupation globally. I said, but there is no U.S. law. 2010 murder memo. Remember? Folks, I keep telling This is where I went to crickets. One of the conditions and connections. They went to executive expedience. Everything is political without due process. And the only due process they provide is the one that they are required to, to sh make a showing. And that's what everybody's complaining about. Instead of going to the core, and this is my problem, going to the core of what the real thing is against us. They made an offer to Assange he had to refuse. Because he committed as a journalist to not expose his source. That was not a real deal. He'd already told them, and if he was presumed innocent and honest, if these liars and cheaters and stealers would presume him honest, they would have had to take his word that Russia had nothing to do with it. That wasn't good enough for the Don. And so you see what happens to Assange. But what's really problematic for me, and I've been bringing this up to people, and it's interesting, I get no support, no treats, no understanding, no questions, no like, whatever, with my tweets about this. And in particular to certain people that keep promoting the, what I deem to be 
the diversion, uh, it's astonishing to me as a society, a globally connected society, no one will respond to what I ask is really the rhetorical question of pointing out the real problem. That once you get into that condition, your question evaporates and you have a different one that you have to now resolve. Uh, the question now comes up. The only question, someone's so bold to tell us, the only questions that should matter in the Extron, Ex Exange extradition case. It says it's an opinion. The woman is, has her rights to an opinion. So I read through. I want to know, what is the only question? See, I have one myself. I've been asking it for years. But I asked this same question I've been asking for years on all things that come against anybody. I'm looking to see if the only question in this author's mind happens to be the one that I think is important. And so, interested in the way you write, you have to develop your your scenario, you develop the context of the position that you're going to take. And it talks about, it's interesting to read, you need to read how badly things are there, how badly he's being treated, the condition he's in. Right? This, to me, is no different than in lots of people get treated in, in United States prisons anyway. So, to me, it's not like a new thing, it's not like an unknown. It's just, now, this one's out in the open where people who... Uh, either were crickets or didn't want to see or had to peek because they can't stop from looking at the accident, started to see some real problems. And they wanted, so they're going to tell us now, tell us all about what's going on with Sun. It's atrocious, folks. How this continues in front of a so-called judge and allowed to continue starts to become more of what I say the problem is and why no one's not focused on all this, I don't know. And this includes all we've already done, a little bit of study on this, who are involved. What's the common denominator in one of the least, the most common, at least the way I would talk here, relative to authority and who has right to do what and that extortion and that coercion. What's a common denominator on both the United States system and the UK system? Because that's more of what the question, if it's a question. My question, you know, is a remedy. The burden of which to fail to answer is the answer. That you can't predict, but due process allows the other under question to provide an answer. The failure of which is conviction as a matter of law. Am I relying on the establishment of the system that way? Absolutely not. I'm, re I'm realizing and uh, asserting uh, antecedent right in me to do the check and balance on my own. If I'm talking too esoteric for people right now, uh, I don't know what to say. That means you're not into it. Going through all this stuff is, you need to read it. You need to read how bad these people are treating Assange. I assume him innocent till proven guilty. I assume, and I've told you my problem with when he went to the bail hearing, what his attorneys didn't do. Oh, I have just mentioned one of the common denominator element, didn't I? And the why behind that, which is not really a why, it's a remedy not affected. That's the why. But going through this whole story of reading, waiting for the question, and the fun, got to get to the end. After all this discussion, what are the questions? The one question. Well, when you look at the very last paragraph, there's more than one question. That defeated the whole thing for me. But let's go read. Maybe there's a good question in here. Read the last paragraph. What am I focusing on? Vilifying the author? Affor affirming my support for Assange? Vilifying a group of people I've identified, uh, an organization of people that are, are an occupier and making my point there? What I want you to focus on is none of that, even though we're going to touch some of that, is on what do you do when you have a problem that is the check and balance when no due process is happening and violations and abuse is happening to you. When you're in that condition and confined, what words should be coming out of your mouth? And this brings me up to the problem with Assange. You didn't hear when he had the opportunity to speak, at least by what's reported and transcribed from 16 people sitting in the peanut gallery, that he ever states himself that his inhumane treatment is bearing upon his ability to defend himself, or for his attorneys to do so. He's come close, but he hasn't outright 
actually stated that the court is allowing the inhumane treatment. He also has an and he has relied on representation. For those of you that understand this, look very carefully at one of the co the common denominator failure here. When you are given you give over consent to a representative, you give up your right to be heard. And this case tells you that in spades. The judge doesn't want to hear it. But guess what? She can hear him. She actually has to hear him if you understand what the heck needs to go on here. She has to listen for something that he yet hasn't done and his attorneys certainly are not going to. And that's my question. Why hasn't he prefaced his inability for a proper defense on the constraints that are placed on him by the court? Now, the first answer is he can't because he's being represented. Why hasn't he fired the attorneys? Now, the court's going to resist. But he can make a record that the court's resisting a proper defense, can't he? So what I'm not talking about in anything about all this more than what do you do when you're when you're being abused and your hands are literally tied here, yet you notice they still have to listen a bit. Why are you talking about logic of a condition and a place you're not supposed to be? You're trying to argue within the context of an opinion of someone else to deny you then to remove them, yourself from that and, exp and show in short statements how what they're doing is not valid. I'm not talking about, oh, we can make an opinion that, oh, you're not supposed to abuse me. I'm saying if you're going to pre make, create the illusion of the rule of law and democracy and due process, what's the very first and basic thing you do but challenge what? jurisdiction. He hasn't done that either. But here's the questions that the author writes. What's the question? She she's going to give us the question. Well, there isn't one question here. Okay, we have a failure. But even that is not the point she goes on to say after she goes through all this dialogue. No one should be arguing the substantive case here. For now, the questions are, is this a political crime? Should Assange receive a fair trial? Does anyone believe he'll go to one, get one in Trump's America? And do we really think, given he's poor, his poor health, he would survive prison there? The answers have to be yes, yes, no, and a resounding no. That's not one question, folks. That's not hers as an opinion to answer either. And there are remedies for affecting those questions if they were valid. Because every one of those except the first one is irrelevant. The question about the political crime turns on what? The authority of the court in the UK to entertain a political matter. How do we identify that? That's pretty simple. That's actually easier than said. Uh, it's easier done than, than it would take me to explain it to you. In fact, we've got the Queen to say so. And I hear none of this being brought up as obstructions to the authority of the judge through a particular remedy which has not been done at common law. For those of you that want to say common law, then nothing is happening in that regard. The representation speaks to the media. The representation argues and tries to present a defense against something that they haven't been shown to be valid against someone that requires an answer. The first thing I tell you not to get involved with, don't argue with someone that don't have authority to give you an answer. Don't argue when there's not a real issue. Qualify the one who purports to be the trier of the fact to determination. Have you heard any of that going on? See, I haven't. What's the question? The question would be, as essentially is how does the court have lawful jurisdiction where United States code shows that the order of extradition issued from the Virginia court is invalid in law, has no competency. Have you heard that question being presented for the court to respond to? Have you had it heard it presented in a way that stops the trial because the burden now flips to the judge to answer that question? 
It's not the questions I see in the last paragraph. It's not any of the discussion about how Assange is being mistreated or the humanity and humanity or the journalism or the free speech or none of that. That's of course. That's what they're doing. That's the, the attack against all y'all. Do they? Can has anybody outed that the fact that no one has the authority to do this and in a, even a simple record? I haven't heard it. And I get in another type of analysis. This Assange, quote, trial is a self-contradictory Kafkaesque nightmare. Again, the author goes through brilliant writing at some level. When you just look at the surface, really lays out this problem. You need to read how this guy's being violated. See, to me, it's just, I'm looking to see qualifying. Yep, 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 they do all that stuff. Yeah, 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 okay, here's, where's the problem? How can we, enter, how can we stick this? Where do we put the stick? Because I have one. Do you have a stick? To put it in their spokes. Where does that go? And she goes along and makes all this other writing on a different story here about Kafkaesque. It is how Kafkaesque. She makes a definition. The problem for me on looking at the definition of what that is, is it's like the arbitrary imposition to something you can't control. In fact, my view is 180 degrees about that point. This is not arbitrary. This is planned. And when 100% of the people involved do 100% of the things that don't do with the 100% of the things that they're 100% should be doing, that's a plan, folks. These are the kinds of things you have to look at in your life relative to your problems. Again, this silence. You have to have a knowledge of the battlefield, of what is expected, what the obligations of duties are, are upon us. And they do that for yourself, but you're also going to protect others. She goes through and talks about this, wants to put this oddball term on something. And now, none of these people that are well-read, well-supported, none of them have the actual understanding. If their opinion, if anybody's opinion is this is arbitrary and capricious, they're missing how it's not. They're missing how it's a plan, and they're missing, well, that they, they can't even figure whether they have a stick to go find a set of spokes to stick in. When you look at this report and you take away the, by the definition that it's not arbitrary, it's not Kafkaesque. This is under a concerted plan to do this. And then we have now the problem, Julian Assange is allowing this. And I've said this before, this is not even new. Is he a dupe for as intelligent as everyone says he is? Or is he a player? Now, let's get to the political question. To me, I don't even know how this is a question. It's been stated. It's been admitted inside the case. The judge continues. No remedy has been executed by the defense, which means he has no remedy. To me, why doesn't he fire the defense and declare that? He has no remedy. There is no defense. And then give them what he's supposed to do, have told them. He has, he has an ear to this so-called judge enough to say that much, if you listen very carefully. But how do we know this is a political statement was answered by the Queen of Elizabeth herself, which I've told you you needed to go, and someone did, but they didn't quite do it quite right. How subtle what I have to say is relative to what people do and relative to what actually has to be done. The question was posed, why don't you intervene on this problem with Assange and the humane treatment and all this? The answer was that the, the, the Queen couldn't involve herself in the case because she remains has to remain non-political at all times. She has to remain non-political at all times is why she can't get involved with the Assange matter defines by the Queen's statement that the issue is by the Queen's order and finding under which the courts are established, the authority of which is established, that this is a political case, was not presented by the defense, so-called, as a determination against the jurisdiction itself, which itself can be said, given it's under the Queen's authority, to be non or politically neutral. In fact, you go to political jurisdictions. I have a link somewhere up here. I'll send it to you to a PDF. You can go read it. I'm not 100% sure about the entire document. 
it would take a lot more study than the time I have to perfect every court case and utility, which is your problem there. I see some hesitation, but there's enough in, in talking about political jurisdiction in the United States, how courts have completely uh, removed themselves from any, tried to not make any political decision. Now, if that's not true, I can tell you that they do it in land disposal, but let's not move over there quite yet. That the political courts don't exist where justice is. That a court will not take a political question that's relegated to the other branches. And they talk about it this way. That the queen comes out and says she has to remain neutral and can't get involved by definition means that court case is political. That judge, so-called, the magistrate, which is like two steps down, I understand, in their system, is supposed to be coming in the name of the queen as a neutral to politics as well has not been presented to the queen back, nor has it been presented as a challenge. Do I give the name now? Do I give the name of the remedy now? Have you been have you thinking? Did you calculate it? Did you say what that remedy is? Did you even have that question? Are you listening close enough? To, what, what, what's the remedy? What's that common law thing? I'll, I'll tell you now. The quo warranto. By what warrant do you hold authority? I would ask that of the queen. By what warrant do you have to be neutral and allow your judicial department, yours, your possession, to act in a non-neutral political fashion. That you be quiet. That you may remain your silence here. None of this has been offered. See, that for the queen, that would be my question. Why one question? My one question to the judge is, how do you have, warrant your authority? Because what did I say about extortion and coercion? The officer has to be within their lawful office, within a lawful capacity. Otherwise, they're unwarranted and now on the stage for the elements of felony. The entirety of the officers in that court are involved with this violation. A violation inside a court system the queen agrees is political. And so my question is, where's the lawful extradition order that the court relies on. I sent an email to Kim.com. Kim.com has been, I mean, I don't know about Kim.com. Uh, I am I like his, uh, there's a lot I like about Kim.com. There's things I absolutely can't understand about him relative to these fundamental things and relative to all the people he has for legal advice around him that will not respond to any of these things the things I'm telling you are findable in the United States Code to be required to be asked and it can be asked at any time the silence to that of which is stunning in one regard and completely mind-boggling in another. Are they dupes or are they players? Uh, sent to Keem.com based on something he wrote. He goes, what I learned defending myself against U.S. lawfare a twist on warfare, which I agree, uh, again, not sure what I think about Kim and some things here. I agree with him on a lot of things. Maybe maybe not his politics for sure. But how to approach these things are pretty well cut and dried. Uh, but what, he goes, what I learned, what Kim.com learned defending myself against U.S. law for is the legal arguments by U.S. prosecutors are mostly primitive, unethical, and easy to disprove. But the U.S. beats you outside the courtroom with political pressure, corruption, and relationships. U.S. always rigs the game to win. And for the most part on that, I will not disagree. But I had an answer for that part that I would disagree too. And remember he said that they rigged the game. You have to out it. And so my response to that, I was, you know, I'm always hoping for a response. I want to know if his wise counsel can counter what I read in the objective black and white as being relevant, material, and pertinent to showing the extradition order from the same court as Assange's isn't void. The statutes say they are. It issues from a legislative or political court, not from a constitutional or judicial court. Oh, did I just define how simple? I didn't need the queen to tell me under U.S. code. It's a political maneuver going on. And the officers in that court are political officers. For those of you that did that research in the Title 28, around 81 to 132, I hope you picked up that little trick right there quick. 
it's real easy to identify it's a political court. It's a veneer court, not constitutional. And so here we, this is what goes in through my mind. I want to know where that lawful extradition order is because the codes say that that couldn't that court couldn't have competency over that subject matter. Did I use too many fast words there for most people? I hope not. For all of you who have been listening to me, I hope you're saying, yeah, yeah, that would be, yep, yeah, that's right. I know in your mind right where to go to prove that out. See, if we're not there with what I'm talking about as a society, we have a really steep hill to climb. And that's not my rule, and that's not me We wanted to say all that, because I'd rather just be left alone too. But that's not reality. And so what I learned is you, is you needed, I'm talking to Kim.com now, you needed to show the lack of lawful extradition order to invalidate the competency of the court to hear it. I don't understand your silence on this avoidance. Assange is allowing the same failures. It causes me to wonder. Hashtag Assange case and free.kim.com Those two cases issuing orders, executive, extradition orders issuing out of the same court has to be a political attack. Again, presumption of innocence. I'm not even looking at the right or wrong uh, judgment that needs to come out until I can start to see due processes fulfilled at the point, immediate point of competency of a court to try it. If that isn't issued, don't I answer all the questions of the prior article? You don't even have to discuss the matter. As I say, don't get into an argument with an insane party or someone who has an alternative for you. Don't make an issue where it doesn't exist. There's nothing to present in that UK court until that court produces its competency to entertain a political order from an incompetent court. Is how I want people to start thinking about this. It takes a long time to explain it. It's not a long time to go look at it when you see it. Again, identify what it is, handle it, and move on. And make sure that you, you tie down what is supposed to happen there, and that it has to. Once it has the burden, you have no more work. Did you hurt any of the bar members, the International Bar Association members by affiliation, doing anything about this? You say, well, they may not, they won't answer that. That's fine. That's a record in the public can see that's established that there's no authority. Not the question of whether or not there's an opinion between whether I interpret this against the other guy's rights or whether or not espionage act is political or not. Or We don't get into all that. And we won't if you make the challenge and then you just shut up and wait for the right answer. And anybody, anything that comes in as an evasion is a felony. Now you have a, see, with all the millions of people involved, now you attack the response, the lack of response by the one who having the burden under the quo warranto, and you go after the system that allows that violation to be public. You bring your awareness of the appearance of impropriety to bear as the peanut gallery. You do everything I've been saying in points, in parts and pieces on how you come together as a society to constrain what the constitutional established you think are are being allowed to violate in you. You don't ask, make a write an article about how Kafkaesque the thing is. It, it's because it's a plan what you're watching. It's not arbitrary what's happening. It doesn't hit and miss here. It's 100% wrong is a plan. It's 100% failed in basic processes. It's a plan. Why do people like Assange and Kim.com not answer to that very basic question of executing a common law remedy against the oppressor to out make the record it has no authority. And then all you, eh, there's a little more to it, but all you essentially have to do is say, why are we, what are you talking? You have no authority. You're, you're a void, you're, you're a trespasser. That's what they end up showing. They're a trespasser. And all the officers supporting it have an oath to the court, not the defendant, are trespassers. Why aren't people doing this? Why do you get in and have to think that there's an injustice going on when it's because of certain extraneous minutia when the injustice happened when an incompetent court ordered an, uh, uh, an order which another court accepted? 
the very violation happens that I have, any one of you, I, Assange, Kim.com, has to make the remedy. That's the harm. Because the court, if it was neutral, had the obligation to witness that in themselves and apply the law coming across to do the extradition. Do I have to, do I say it one more time? The USDC court issuing the ex extradition order is a legislative, not constitutional court. It's strictly political in a legislative capacity. Cannot issue a constitutional order. It's certainly outside the country. The other failure of which is on the UK side, not analyzing for that failure maybe would have fixed it to come out of the proper DCUS court from the proper jurisdiction as well. There's another failure for that side you have to check for. And then maybe we would have that case forward. But when you have a spaghetti western going on, does anything have to actually be proved? Is anything you say nothing more than a show? My thought, as I said that, is if you folks listening to me or those that maybe come to listen to me in the future aren't thinking this way, you're missing a big part of the problem. And I say that with a bit of hesitation because you have to give over, a, you give over, the, you move the challenge, you execute the remedy, but you have to give that response place and time. And it has to come pretty quick. What I'm saying is, you don't know what's going to come back as a response when you work civilized with people, if I can use the word civilized here. You have to allow for that response, and you really don't know what they might have as the authority that maybe you just missed. Here's the point. So you ask, you assert the remedy to make sure. You don't assume, and you do the assumption, that the presumption that it's okay works. You declare the Remedy to check the fact. Did not issue from Assange's mouth relative to the time he had the chance to say, did not fire his attorneys that are not giving him a defense, that are already allowing the jurisdiction and plunder to happen against him, that did not then reassert the fact of his failure, the fact that the court's harming him in order to keep him from that, uh, getting rid of the defense so that he can talk to the court and then issue the challenge directly would be, a, I think, it, well, maybe I'm looking at it too technically of what has to happen and people want to just give up that. I don't. I think that's a better record to make. I don't even have to get into whether or not it's politically motivated. Because impliedly in the remedy, I'm going to check that and it will no longer be a question. And once I get that proved out, then I can go back to the queen, couldn't I? What are you allowing in your country? Why? I just want to expose that this illusion is exactly that. This is an alternative reality. The Matrix is not a movie. You can buy into it. Your failure to properly address it is the license for it to continue. A crime against you. And I, okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit irritated. And it, I see so many people being hurt. I see so many people having problems because of this oppression that's on us in so many different ways. I see how it goes through the world. We talk about the coronavirus, natural law, how we don't respond, the crickets, all this stuff, it just keeps, to my mind, around and around and around, and no one takes the stick that they have in their hand and sticks it in the spoke of the occupier. They have him fall on his face. They don't, nobody seems to do that. Is it too hard for Kim.com or Assange or their attorneys or even the court itself. I mean, that would be, fa boy, that would almost flabbergast me. What should happen? The court does its own recheck now because of the question. It would be cool. It's not going to happen. But is it so hard to ask to perfect in the record the valid competency of a court to hear and try a case? Is that so hard to do? If you said yes, Please go study some more. It's as easy as what I just said, except there's some special little words you put on a piece of paper, like the petition for writ of quo warranto, or a, a quo warranto. You just fulfill the basic parameters to let someone know what you're doing, and you place it on the officer that has the, that has the duty to respond. And then you wait. 
and you listen very carefully, and you get ready to, well, our experience is they commit more felonies, so you just get ready to start covering the felony. With more people looking in that understand this, oh, this gets easy. This is easy work. And then you start, once you roll out that there's no jurisdiction, then you go back and you start hitting the bell marsh about how their competency is lacking because they have no lawful order before them to hold him either. And you get thousands of people on that. Then you go into the system. What allows this to exist? You go into the system of administration. You, dis, you go after that. All on this simple little failure or a lie, an evasion within an answer to that. Seems to be a whole lot more focused in my mind and easier to deal with, especially where you have minions to come with you. Like we had the minions of all the counties stepping up in Virginia. Like I was hoping the miners would become the minions for themselves and their own mining uh, problems against the government, being a force to be reckoned with, a unified a mass of educated people. But every turn in my life, and since I've become aware of this, every turn we fail as a people. We fail on it internationally, I guess I'm pointing out here as well. We fail with people that are well regarded in a lot of sectors, well listened to, profess to be well understanding and well schooled, knowledgeable about the world, but they don't understand how to avoid the world and be in it and not of it. And then I have to wonder, the, the question I have of them is, are you a dupe or are you a player? And so, duper player, I guess I'll move on. Uh, something, a uh, little issue here, again, this brings up a lot of this impositional thing uh, that I think just reflects out. A privacy browser, Brave, now digs up the Internet's past. So, this was partly it, 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 tied into the fact that you need evidence for lots of these things. In the past, in the future, maybe the Queen's acknowledgement that she's supposed to stay neutral and that it acknowledges the political nature of the, the thing against Assange, which his, nobody on his defense is, is actually doing the remedy available for him uh, that, that is there. Uh, we have uh, now in this browser a cool thing. When you search out something that doesn't exist or has been removed, the archive.org group is tied into the Brave browser. And it goes to the Wayback Machine, and it tries to get you this information. Uh, I point this out because relative to this browser, and I'm not a fan of this browser for a couple of other reasons, and sufficiently so that I would go to the Wayback Machine without the browser, and I do already. But at any rate, uh, this now called a privacy browser that puts you into another organization that actually keeps an archive of everything we know, if you will, and attempts to do that on multiple places. And I think um, I've got a couple of files on archive.org, and I've had Vinny ask me to do the video, which I did get a, when I had the power down uh, for the, the Internet down for a week. I would got back to that, but uh, having still got down that project, to put videos over these things, and we upload them to archive to make an archive of these broadcasts uh, has been a big problem, beyond, a big project beyond me at this point. But So the, the Wayback Machine is a known, known quantity. The archive.org is a known quantity, and it's really a cool project. But my problem here with talking about, uh, pointing out that some browser will help you do this is also the problem with that I have, and I'm not going to go too deep into it more, uh, about the browser, about what you use to go about the internet. And they claim to be a privacy browser, but I noticed, and what I don't like, and the Opera browser did the same thing, when you download it, and they then, even though you tell it not to do updates, and I have a sys internal sys internals thing that I go look at when I turn on these things to see. They go phone home. They go communicate. They're communicating all the time. They update themselves when I don't want them to do. And I have that particular problem where I don't like updates going unless I'm watching because problems can happen. Well, everything has to be kind of manual. I don't like to do automatic for lots of reasons. And one of them is because my system sometimes doesn't handle those automatic stuff. And I need to keep track of how. The Brave browser wants to do a lot. I'm not interested to see and hasn't asked me. And if they did, they haven't uh, got my permission actually. Opera browser was the same thing. I do like that it has this function that makes some of these things inter uh, interchangeable. But this is my problem with being offered a bad deal that looks like a good deal. The offer that looks like you can't refuse. They also have their own crypto thing going on. I don't quite understand a little bit, but that's a problem because that means they got to track and trace everything you're doing. And while some of this stuff I have no problem with, it was kind of a cool way to go. Actually, in the times we live, in the occupation we are, 
in the future they're telling they're coming. It's not necessarily such a good idea. Oh, use their fiat, or do you choose the real silver and gold money? Choose their food without knowing where the uh, origins are, or do you start making deals with your local ranch or farmer? And so I'm, I'm not a fan right now of Brave Browser, but I want to point out they tell us there's things they'll offer. They're interesting. They're good. I think it's good to do just have it automatic. But we don't need the overhead, the secret overhead as well. And again, a lot of my objections to using digital things as a app or a program has to do with looking at what they do when you get it, what they purport, where that might lead, as you would see me do the notices in the behind the woodshed, or what the underlying privacy policies actually are, and that when you're accepting somebody's deal, especially for free, it's likely not at some expense to you. Now think how subtle this was to go after Assange. President Trump had the obligation and duty to identify that the court order was invalid in the law that I read, and any of you that can that have done it know this, or anybody that will, that uh, Title 28 section, and you got to go through all the states because they're all the districts, and then go to the Cornell site for 18... Uh, the 28 U.S.C. 81 to 134 or something like that, and go read the notes and then go sub search the court cases. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. That you, you don't, Trump was supposed to identify that was an invalid court order and call off his dogs. And he doesn't. Instead, he offers a legal lawyer demand to try and get from Assange the name of the one that he said he can't give as a journalist now, they recognize impliedly as a journalist to do this, that he can't give the information because that would violate his promise as a journalist. And he doesn't have to. That's the kind of Trump deal you're getting. That's the one you can't accept. The deal you can't accept is the one to look in the future, look in no matter how good it is for you. Maybe if it's free, and even when if you pay for it, maybe it's not such a valid thing to choose. Okay, so I guess enough there. Heads up. How to defeat the red flag confiscation. I found this to be a very interesting insight. As I now refer back to the Virginia um, sanctuary thing, didn't stop the legislature, like I told you, and no no judgment here. Just That's just the way the dynamics of politics is. It's what we ran, we ran into that wall ourselves in 2013, caused our injunction and uh, lawsuit or equity suit, which we got a default judgment on, right? Okay, as I told you how we did all that, same thing I'm telling you today. How you challenge even a court that they claim you invoked that you did for competency was a quo warranto. Okay, it's all in the record. You just go look. You see how this is done. And so, it's not like these attorneys don't know it. And if they don't know it, holy smokes on your defense, right? And you're the one who sits in the prison, remember. They just represent you. They're, you're the one that's going to pay the price. I forgot to just mention that. You have to understand it's on you. Strict liability to you. You shouldn't be having these attorneys, in particular where the judge says you have to shut up and use your representation. I would have fired or tried to fire those representations. In fact, I try not to get them to attach them even at the beginning. I run out every record I possibly can until I can't. And then I reanalyze what the reality is. And this requires a global awareness, which he has. This requires a global awareness, which Kim.com has. They have the global awareness. They had that in Virginia, and yet you don't have the follow-through. And so now that you have this, I think it's a red flag law, or it's some diminishment of some level on the, on the, uh, on the right to bear arms. Heads up, how to defeat a red flag confiscation. Okay, so now we, this is the reality. We didn't do what we were talking. No one did what I was liking to see, and there was no guarantee just doing that works. What it does is makes the record the rest of the mob. They'll, they'll say you're a mob. It's actually your mass community that the Constitution recognizes as valid as an authority, the authority to make the decision, the, the mass of community, the majority of community. That's written in. They can't deny that. And so now that you've all failed, and this goes for everybody, and the same thing with the miners, we... We um, failed to keep the legislation out. We just got an injunction that it's not doesn't have force and effect for those that know how to use that. And that's the other thing about equity suits, that now they have a problem. And all these red flags. So this is an interesting uh, 
for those of you that still find the oppression now is now worse, keep looking for answers. Look around. People may have something for you. I think this is a bit of an insight, and, be, and partly because it touches things in historic the things that we had to deal with back in the 90s or when, when, when I started to move through, before I started to figure out that thing we thought, which was law and justice, may not actually exist and certainly not the way we thought. So this article talks about prevention first relative to the confiscation of your guns now that you have red flag conditions in lots of states now because no one knows how to really stop this. And no one's really doing what I've been suggesting for me to tell you that it's not the way or that I've got an error in what I'm suggesting. But here's the first piece of advice that I thought was valid and important. Keep your mouth shut. All right? Don't broadcast that you have the guns. This is the very first thing. Now, keep your mouth shut works when there's a, when there's a, some agent of the government on you, except to the limit of your requirement to have a, point of first contact reference for your defense and the proper defense relative to what? Their actual lawful authority. You can't shut up about that at the point of first contact, but don't spout that you're a gun guy, a gal. Don't spout how many you have. Don't talk. This becomes now you have to censor yourself or face the potential attack, which is around. It's everywhere. If you thought we lived in some law and order, now well, you're, you're learning you're living in open-air prison where people get credit, social credit, for outing everybody. That's what the community, the, the community, uh, stand, the community uh, organizations were. They signed these little signs everywhere, community watch. Uh, that was the imposition of the foreign thing, and no one, no, one the, no one saw the domestic threat, everyone who took an oath to defend the domestic threat. Uh, they don't see that. So if you don't see it, I guess you don't fight it. Uh, again, consumers are uh, apathetic, uh, crickets. They're also consumption, not active. They sit back. And now that you've sat back, now you got to do turtle up a little bit. Keep your mouth shut about what you got going. Be wary of followers and friends, apparently, relative to the social media. Be careful that uh, discussion boards and social media sites often lead to familiarization. We see one another uh, on our favorite sites and strike up a sort of online bond of brothers. We like to, uh, to one another's comments and post supportive replies or not. Anyway, you interact and have uh, and you put your stuff in there that anybody could be monitoring. And I have the uh, 120 discus followers. This author says a uh, small company uh, to be too many, and I follow an un, an equal number of many like-minded. Uh, take our take our poll story below. Excuse me. Completing the poll grants, you access the DC updates and free of charge. Okay, you, it's an advertisement for where I'm getting this. Uh, so you can engage with that social surveillance as he's doing this, you see. And so you're not keeping your mouth shut. It's an offer, the part that I wouldn't accept. But I'm reading for content here. What do we do here in case of red flag law? If I didn't have another thought in my mouth, someone's talking about it. Uh, some people collect followers. Don't do that. Don't op one up a loud mouth. Don't challenge other people relative to what you are and do relative to red flags and what you'll do. As he says, flurry of chest thumping comments, threatening to take away, take out anybody that comes to the poster's guns. That is, institutes this stuff. Be cognizant of what your words do. Be cognizant of your actions may be accepting deals you should have refused. And you should pay the price. Why? Not that you should pay the price. That's the only deal there is, is to pay the price or agree to become abused in a different way. It's better to be in view, abused in an unrighteous by the in an unrighteous way than it is to have someone plausibly say that they're abusing you in the right way. And so it goes on and on. Who's watching ATF, FBI's provocateurs? Boy, Vinny over there uh, at the 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 uh, Bundy thing, you know, surrounded by them. It may, maybe maybe more numbered and. FBI or ATF provocateurs and BLM provocateurs than actual participants, maybe, huh? Not quite, but you understand here. Never keep all your firearms in one location. For those of you that couldn't stop these laws or don't know how what they're doing and they're coming on you, don't put all your stuff in one basket, huh? How long have we been told this local rancher farmer thing that we need to get back to? Stop. Um, well, self-censor. Okay, on the strategy of defeating red flag confiscation. Now, this is where I found it very interesting. Uh, for several years, I performed mental health assessments on people. Someone is suspected of being a danger to themselves. Most often, 
and this is the crux of the red flag condition, and this is why this became important. This is now dealing with the authority to make a decision and how they would make that decision and how to guide that decision. You don't do it on a record made on someone else's statement. You have to have your own record. And this is what this ends up getting to, why I found this so valuable for all y'all, and in any subject matter, actually. Most often, there was some merit to these claims, but I didn't uh, take anything for granted. I first determined if they knew who they were, where they were, and what day it was. So this is very interesting. This is what the questions they do when you do a, meta, a, a, a psychological hold. They have someone come in and do their psychological test. They, you don't want to be stupid here. You, you want to be right up with these folks in one regard. And, and he says they're looking to see whether or not you know who you are and where you are and what day it is. Don't be trying to do defending your rights at this point. Just answer that question because a lot, every time I've seen this, and it hasn't yet changed in some of the stories subsequent, the guys that come in really have to have a really good reason in, F, in, in writing that they can actually give you, hold you for a psychological failure. And so you just give them the straight answers here. You don't say any more than you need to. The, they have to make a record that shows that they can validate that you're a harm, uh, that you're losing it or you're going to be a harm to society. Then I went on to explore the applicant's claims with the person. Are you suicidal? Do you wish to harm others? Do you have the means to harm yourself or others? Have you ever, that's a tricky question. Have you ever attempted uh, such an act? He says, you get the picture, the author says. In order to get a judge to sign off on a temporary commitment, I had, this is the guy that's doing the check, the test. He, the medical or so-called licensed one, had to get a legal justification for taking that individual's liberty away for the next 72 hours. In the case of red flag, I think it's indefinitely or within 30 days or something. It's a little bit longer. They had to be an immediate threat to themselves or others with the means and a plan of a history of the same. Here's his advice in bold. If you are brought before a judge following red flag reg, request an immediate mental health assessment at the expense of the county or the state. If the court cannot establish clearly that you are immediate danger to yourself or others, the chances of making the confiscation stick are weak. A red flag confiscation rests on the state being able to determine there is an immediate specific risk uh, to have uh, having your uh, access to your firearms. Uh, if the judge refuses a request, make sure that gets entered on the record, he says, folks. Just like what I keep telling you. And then, uh, more important, he says, maybe get your health report, a mental health report, and I'm, I'm cautious about even entering this in this way, but uh, as far as some, get a mental assessment before you go for your records you can produce, which I found a very interesting way to show that you have a prior record, and what are you doing? You're flipping the burden on the complainant, and this is just a tactic that you would do anyway when you challenge their authority to have a say. You say, well, my records show I'm quite fine. Maybe you have a problem. Know the mental health laws in your state. This is a very important one to understand. Every state has legal definition for danger to self and others. You have to then get the black and white in your eyes, folks, on this so that you can protect yourself. This is the day I've been telling you is here. It's now coming in different ways. So I hope I said something today that uh, you can get your teeth in, find a wrong you can make right, start where you need to start. You'll start seeing this unwrap and, and unfold. Uh, Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And thanks again to the donations that came in during the month uh, fundathon, and all you subs, uh, people that are doing the syndication and the all the support, the comments, all that stuff, and the reminding and all that, and the bit shoot, all that, all that stuff that we do. Thank you very much. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass.